Hi, I'm Omni Sunday. Everyone knows about these big dipter and insects called horseflies, but I thought it'd be funny if they were actual horse-like flies. Unfortunately, we have a few roadblocks before we can get there. For one, insects have some inefficient respiratory and circulatory systems, like how they can only breathe passively and their blood just kind of swishes around in their body. This is fine for small animals, but if we want horse-sized flies, we need to fix this. So on an Earth-like planet called Origin, Earth-like insects evolved more efficient systems to energize their body and allow for larger sizes. But that's not it though. There's also the problem of an exoskeleton. It would be pretty bad for a large animal to molt away its exoskeleton and turn to soft motion till it can regain its composure, not to mention all the lost nutrients if it doesn't immediately start eating the mold. No matter how you cut it, large insects would need an endoskeleton to support their weight. Maybe some completely lose their old exoskeleton and develop a more reptilian body plan, but the ones we'll talk about only partially lose their exoskeleton, which will become a series of tough plates. This will keep them looking segmented and insectoid while solving our problem of molting. Okay, but if we just supersize a standard horsefly, even with all our modifications, we would meet a problem. This problem is known by many as the party pooper law, but is known more professionally as the square cube law. It simply means that if you double the height, width, or length of something, you're quadrupling the area and octupling the volume. In other words, squaring the area and cubing the volume. Why is this a problem? Well, a horsefly, and pretty much any other animal, is built for the size that it is, and changing said size causes a lot of problems. Here's an example. Let's say we had elephant-sized mice and mice-sized elephants. Mice are real plump and soft because they're so small and they need as much warmth as they can get, so their surface area is minimized. Elephants, however, are very muscular and have a ton of surface area to release as much heat as possible, otherwise they could overheat. So if mice became that big without any other changes, they'd overheat and probably melt under their own weight. Elephants becoming tiny would quickly lose too much body heat and freeze. There are a ton of other more complicated problems with metabolism, but this is all we really have to know. So let's start drawing. The idea is a giant horsefly with plate armor and lots of surface area. I'm going to make it quadrupedal, so it'll look kind of centaur-like with its third pair of legs, or first pair, depending on how you look at it. Its legs will be relatively long and it'll have large wings, though it probably can't fly. It's warm-blooded with very high metabolism, so it uses its wings to release extra heat while perhaps moving even faster with huge jumps. Here's the final art. On origin, horseflies are hugely dangerous carnivores that hunt prey in high-speed chases. They're found in open plains as they have trouble traversing rough or rocky terrain. When agitated, they make an extremely loud buzzing sound with their wings. They prefer medium-sized mammals for their meals, but are not picky. They have an incredible range in their eyesight, though it's not very detailed. If something moves and looks like it could be killed with a jab at its neck, the horsefly will attempt to attack. Its intelligence is debatable, as it seems to know that the neck is a sensitive area, but has trouble defining what is and isn't a neck. The most common occurrence is when it is seen attacking tree branches or bushes, videos of which seem to be more and more common with the rise of social media. But don't be fooled. Although it may attack things that don't need to be attacked, it will never mistake actual prey for what it is. If you see one in the distance, try to get to a high place, or just get as far away as possible if you can. Well, that's about it. I hope you had fun going on this journey with me, and you can be sure that I'll be exploring the idea of supersized arthropods in future Spec Evo videos. However, my next one will be a much less chaotic one about quadrupedal birds. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you there!